Hello everyone. Welcome back. In today's lecture we will see the CIA triad. As usual we will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of this session the learner will be able to outcome number 1 we will define computer security. Outcome number 2 we will know the key objectives of computer security. Outcome number 3 we will understand the CIA triad and outcome number 4 we will know various levels of impact of security breach. Before we step into the CIA triad let's see the definition of computer security. The computer security definition is as follows. The protection afforded to an automated information system in order to attain the applicable objectives of preserving the integrity, availability and confidentiality of information system resources which includes hardware, software, firmware, information or data and telecommunications and this is the definition of computer security by NIST which is a government organization of the United States. I know you will find many key terms in the definition I will just provide you an easy way to understand this definition. Let's figure out the three important key terms of the definition. Number 1 the integrity, number 2 the availability and number 3 confidentiality. If we understand all these three key terms then the definition will be easy. Ultimately we are going to provide security to the system. The system includes both hardware and software. Not only hardware and software we should also focus on the firmware or the data or the information that is processed by the system and not only this the telecommunications as well what is telecommunications it is the communication at a distance so in this subject we are going to focus on security in all aspects of the computer networks and obviously computer networks has a lot of things to deal with if these three key objectives are clear that is the integrity availability and confidentiality then the definition will be clear anyway we are going to see these three key terms elaborately in the cia triad part let's now step into the cia triad what is the cia triad the name itself says that it is a triad tri means three so there are three key elements of this cia triad let's see what are the three key elements We can see the first element is the confidentiality the second one is the integrity and the third one is the availability and we can notice that everything is for the data and the services we are going to do with the computer system all right let's see the key terms elaborately firstly we will focus on the first key element the confidentiality when we say something is confidential what do you mean by that it means others should not understand except the parties who are involved in that transaction say if i am drafting a letter to my friend and if i mention that it is confidential this confidential message means it should be known to me as well as to my friend right because these two parties are legitimate parties involved in this transaction now if an anonymous person receives this letter or message and if he sees the message or the content what is there in the transaction then ultimately there is loss of privacy right so obviously we don't have any confidentiality when somebody sees the message So we need to prevent unauthorized access and disclosure. Unauthorized access means nobody else can access except the right entities who are involved in the transaction. And disclosure means the message should not be open enough. To be simple, if the message is encrypted, no one else can see what is the message except the sender and the receiver, right? Because the sender and the receiver only will know what is the message, what is the key, what is the encryption algorithm, everything, right? Generally encryption algorithms are kept public and keys only are kept secret anyway i will talk about this later for time being just understand confidentiality means we need to protect the data that is being transmitted if it is encrypted obviously it provides confidentiality because no one else can see what it is right it is a scrambled text that they are seeing no one else should be able to understand what is the message that is being transmitted between the sender and the receiver This is exactly confidentiality. Let's come to the second key element in CIA triad which is the integrity. I will just give you a formula like this. Sent is equal to received. Whatever the sender is sending, the same message only the receiver should receive. For example, if you are performing a banking transaction of 1000 rupees, obviously the transaction should involve only 1000 rupees. What if an attacker modifies this as 10000 rupees? not only the modification of amount by the attacker let's assume the destination address or the destination account is given as the attacker's account 
Just imagine this for an example. This may not be real and this may not be seeming to be a perfect example, but I wanted to make you to understand the severity of modification of message. I wanted to explain you what is integrity. So we don't want any modification of messages by the unauthorized people. Say you want to transfer some fund to your friend, but unfortunately the fund is being transmitted or transferred to somebody else account that is attacker's account. Obviously this has happened because of the modification of the messages that is being transmitted between the sender and the receiver by the attackers. So this transaction should not be permitted by the system and the security system should be able to find out that this is not the message that was sent by the sender. In other words the security system should ensure that this is not the transaction that was initiated by the sender. So integrity means we need to ensure that there is no modification of the message that is being transmitted. So whatever the sender is sending that only the receiver should receive and if there is any modification in the message that is being transmitted the system should be able to find out that and it should discard that message so integrity is also one of the key terms of the CIA triad and coming to the third key element which is the availability availability means we need to ensure the timely and the reliable access to the system say for example if you are hitting google.com if you hit now it will work if you hit after 1 hour it will work if you hit after 10 days it will work because you trust that google server will be always available at the same time there may be many attacks that may be launched against google.com server but still google server is a very secure one and google is able to provide its service to the customers or the users who access it without any flaws so that's the power of a security system i will also provide you one more example Imagine you have a bank account and you want to access your banking server. You are expecting the banking server to respond you with the requested data. What if an attacker has launched an attack on the banking server and disrupted the service? So when you access the banking server you are not getting the service that you are expecting. Obviously we don't encourage that because whenever we want a service we expect the system to provide service to us and this service should be a timely and a reliable service as well. There will be attackers always on the internet and our security system is expected to provide security to the system and to the users and whenever any attack is launched on the server we expect the server should withstand that attack it should still be able to provide access to the servers in the same way as it was in the perfect situation and that's it about the CIA triad let's now navigate to the levels of impact of security breach When there is a security breach in the organizational data or to the server or to an individual basically there will be three levels of impact number 1 is the low level impact number 2 is the medium level impact and number 3 is the high level impact we will see the various levels of impact of security breach one by one now firstly we will focus on low level impact if your system is affected by some attacks and the low level impact means there is a limited adverse effect on organization's operation or organizational assets or individual that is the system is affected with minor harm or minor damage or in terms of financial aspects it is a minor financial loss if the effect of the attack is negligible then it falls in the low level impact and coming to the next level of impact which is the medium level of impact it has a serious adverse effect on organizational operation or organizational assets or even serious adverse effect on individual so the loss may be a significant loss or a significant damage or a significant harm that is caused to the organization or to the individual and this medium level of impact means the attack may be involving in the loss of life or even serious life threatening issues also and coming to the final level of impact which is the high level impact so when the medium itself is very dangerous think about the high level impact so everything is gone right so the reputation everything high level impact of security breach means the organization has catastrophic adverse effect it means severe adverse effect on organizational operations or organizational assets or individual it is a complete disaster to the organization So these are the three levels of impact of security breach and this could be for an individual or for an organization or for an organizational data or for the information system or for any kind of stuff that really need security before we step out let's see the additional features of CIA triad basically the CIA triad includes only three key elements right the confidentiality the integrity and the availability we also have two more additional elements and the additional elements are number 1 the authenticity and number 2 accountability 
Authenticity is the property of being genuine and being able to verify the parties involved. Say if the sender is going to send some message to the receiver. Say if the receiver is receiving a message and the receiver should be able to verify that the message is from the right party or the message is from the trusted source. We will call this property as authenticity. In other words, let's say you are accessing google.com. Suppose if you give a request from your browser as www.google.com and you are expecting that your request is going to Google server and not any bogus server, right? When the request is received by Google server and Google should be able to verify that it is from you. So this is we call as authentication or authenticity. And coming to the next additional element which is accountability. Say for example, accountability is also an essential part of an information security plan. It means every individual who works with an organization or who works with an information system should have specific responsibilities for information assurance. Every user who access the system has their own roles and responsibilities and whatever the actions the users perform, the system should keep records of their activities. Why system should keep track of the activities? Because later if any attack is launched or if we find that something is suspicious, then the system should permit forensic analysis later to trace the security breaches. So in order to do that, we need to ensure that the system is accountable. Every user is given some responsibility and every user should access only to that level of privilege or it must ensure that the users are not misusing their privileges. Let's see some real-time examples for confidentiality, integrity and availability. The first one we will see is confidentiality. For example, the banking account information. Say you have your mobile phone and you have your banking app in your mobile phone. If you request some data from your banking server and from the banking server to your mobile phone or to your desktop from where you are going to access, the data traffic must be encrypted. What if, if the data is not encrypted? Obviously, there are chances for the attackers to see what information is being transferred between the sender and the receiver. So we don't encourage that should happen. So encryption is one of the ways we can achieve confidentiality. If the message is encrypted, except the server and you who are accessing the system, no one else can understand what it is. So the message must be encrypted. Encryption is one of the ways to achieve confidentiality. Coming to the second example, which is integrity, the patient's information. Say for example, there is a hospital management system. Let's assume someone is having some disease and that person is installed with some sensors and the sensors are installed on his body. In this hospital management system, the doctor can be anywhere in the world and the patient can also be anywhere in the world. But still doctor and patient relationship can exist seamlessly because of the powerful internet connectivity and the IoT concepts, the internet of things. In this example, the patient is wearing a sensor and the patient or doctor need not be in person to do the medical treatment or to get the medical treatment. And what is the role of the sensor, you know? The sensor is going to report the heartbeat rate periodically to the doctor via the servers. Let's assume the server is going to collect all the heartbeat information that is sent by the sensor. So obviously, whatever the sensor is sensing the heartbeat value that should be stored without any alteration in the server only then the doctor will be able to provide right treatment to the patient. If the sensor is sensing the right value and the right value is sent to the server but during the travel if an attacker is modifying the value and if this modification is stored in the server and when the doctor sees this modified value and he is giving some treatment based on this, this could be a life threatening issue also. It could even lead to lethality or fatality. Let's assume the heartbeat value that is sensed by the sensor is 70 and this 70 is now being transmitted to the receiver that is the server. What if the attacker captures this packet and modifies it as 150? So the treatment may go wrong, right? Because of this. So all patient's information must be confidential and not only confidential, it should also have the property of integrity. So whatever the sender is sending, that only the receiver should receive. No modification should be permitted. So this is an example for integrity and coming to the next one, the availability example authentication service. Let's assume there is a server which is providing authentication service and whenever user wants to carry out any activity, this user must be verified or authenticated by the authentication server. And this authentication server should be always available because user may request data access at any point of time. So authentication is one of the important services that should be always available. We can take Google as an example also. Just think anytime you access google.com, you will be able to get the access. 
because google.com server is available all the time and whenever you request any service you should get that service that's what as an end user we will expect right the examples that are shown here just for understanding concepts but in reality every application or every organization has their own set of policies their confidentiality level or their confidentiality need will be different from each other say for example the integrity requirement or the availability requirement or the confidentiality requirement for every individual or an organization varies so it has to be followed as per the policies they frame i hope these examples will help you to understand what is confidentiality integrity and availability and that's it guys i hope now you understood the computer security the key objectives of computer security we also understood the cia triad and we also have seen various levels of impact of security breach i hope you guys enjoyed today's lecture i'll see you in the next lecture and thank you for watching